Last week, again, because God is in control, God is almighty, God is sovereign. Last week, the imam could not meet me. So I spent about two hours with several converts who knew nothing about the Christian faith and knew nothing about Islam. The right-hand man was upset because he saw he virtually knew nothing about Islam and he knew nothing about the Holy Bible. He told the imam what's going on and the imam said, come back this Wednesday, which I did. And he'd engage me. Well, glory to Jesus Christ. Two divinely ordained meetings. The place was rocked. God showed up in a mighty way. The Holy Spirit just anointed that place. The people saw that their imam, they thought was a scholar, basically knew absolutely nothing about his own religious tradition. It was a glorious event. I was nothing but loving, respectful, but passionate and in his face and did not let him back down or run away with pat answers or falsehoods. He actually admitted to so many things and I even highlighted it for the rest of the people. Did you hear what he said? I went there so that God would use me to open his heart, but specifically for the converts to Islam. Let me give you a synopsis of what he admitted in front of everyone. Black Knight was there. I got him to admit that Muslims can go to the grave of Muhammad, a dead man buried in his grave, and talk to him and pray to him and ask him to pray for them. He admitted. He said, well, they're not dead. They're alive. I got him to admit in front of everyone that even in their mosques, they greet Muhammad in their prayers when they say to him five times a day, when they pray in tashahud, As-salamu alayka ayu nabi meaning peace be upon you, O Prophet. Now guess what I got the Imam to admit? It was truly Holy Spirit ordained. The Holy Spirit just filled us. I walked away elated like I did last week because I knew the Holy Spirit showed up for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay, now, what's the point of me mentioning that? He said, when we Muslims say in our five daily prayers, tashahud, where they say, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah, rahmatullah wa barakatuh, and the mercy of Allah and his blessing. We're not really speaking to Muhammad. We're repeating what Allah said to Muhammad. We're repeating what Allah said to Muhammad when Muhammad visited Allah. Okay, now why is this interesting? Because I said, peace be upon you. Isn't that a dua? A dua? Dua is the Arabic word for supplication, invocation. He said, yes. I go, so you admit that Allah makes dua to Muhammad. He goes, yes, but it's not like our dua. He embarrassed himself because, folks, dua, the Arabic word, D-U-A in transliteration, Muhammad says at dua, the invocation is alibada, is worship. Worship is dua, dua is worship. And he admit Allah made dua to Muhammad. And it went over his head. And they're seeing their imam, whom they told me is a scholar, getting schooled by the power of the Spirit in a very loving, respectful way. And he was a very kind guy. I pray in Jesus' name he gets saved. No, they were rocked, uh, Dina. They were really troubled. It's going to get worse. I go, now let's talk about the ruh, the spirit. So I took him to chapter 19, verses 16 to 21, where Allah sent his spirit to appear as a man, a perfect-looking man, to give Mary a faultless son. Then I went to chapter 66, verse 12, and I said, can you tell people, guys, this is going to really floor you. And ladies are listening. The ladies are listening. Watch this. This is going to floor you. This is going to amaze you. I'm actually rejoicing in the spirit. I said, Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 12. It says, and Mary, the daughter of Imran. And I said, ah, sanat farjaha. What does farj mean? Without hesitation, he goes, private part. He's without hesitation. He goes, private part. So I go, and when it says, ah, sanat farjaha. And then it says, Allah breathe blue, fihi. What's fihi? He said, into her. I go, no, you know Arabic. Fihi, he is him. What is it referred to? He goes, the womb. I go, no, it doesn't refer to the womb because he didn't mention the womb. You just said what it mentioned. Farj. He goes, yeah. And I go, what is farj? Private part. So your Quran is saying that Allah blew, and I said it, blew into Mary's private part. He goes, well, yeah. He goes, yeah, that's what it says. And I said, the word fudge. He thought it's a feminine noun. I go, no, it's not. It's masculine. He goes, oh, yeah, you're right. And now they're seeing their imam being corrected by me who knows Arabic. He knows Arabic and I'm correcting him. So he admitted to everyone 
Allah blew his spirit into Mary's private part. And then here's where it really gets amazing. His right-hand man, that agnostic who became a Muslim in his stupidity and ignorance and made Jesus save him. I could tell he was sitting to his right and I could see him and he had a face mask. I could tell by his face, he's angry, he is ticked and he's agitated and he's depressed because his hero, his imam, who's telling me all oh, the imam knows, was getting schooled and he was getting, and I looked at him and I looked and I go, you heard that, right? I just want you to remember that. He goes, yeah, so what? I go, so what? Your God blows into a woman's private part. So what? I'm like, okay, we'll get back to that. I made sure he heard it. Now the ladies are to my left. I can't look at their faces. I don't want to make it obvious. Only the Lord knows what the ladies to my left are thinking to hearing this. So then we get into the spirit being, being the creator and life giver. He says, no, 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 no. Uh, it doesn't mean the spirit gave. Didn't, it doesn't mean the spirit created. It means that Allah is creating and the spirit is announcing it. Maybe that's not what it says. And he says, for instance, Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. So we went into discussion about that. I go, you just said Gabriel's the Holy Spirit. Can you show me in your crying? And by the way, he spent a 10-minute spiel, 10 minutes. And here, Black Knight will confirm it, 10-minute spiel. Yes, you can't just interpret the Quran linguistically. You can't just look at the Arabic grammar. That's not how I interpret the Quran. You must go to the tafsir. And he simply gave it to me. I, th I was thinking, my, thank you, Lord Jesus. Because every time he tried to explain it, I go, wait, you said we cannot explain it on our own our own interpretation, and we can't explain it linguistically. We must go to tafsir. You're giving me your explanation. Let me give you Ibn Kathir. And they got upset at Allah praying. No, it doesn't mean Allah prays. Sali doesn't mean that. He goes, Sali means peace. But he no, it doesn't. Sali doesn't mean peace. Salam means peace. And then anyway, he got intimidated, and then he stopped me, by the way. Black Knight was there. He goes, you know what? You know, before we go any further, we, we need to give other people a chance to ask questions. Remember that black knight, Mike's exaggerating? He was getting hot under the collar and didn't want me to keep asking. Yeah, and I, met, I brought up 3356. So he looked around, asked people, have any questions? And they were all dumbfounded because they were in a state of shock. They didn't know what to ask. So he's like, any questions? And no one's answering. And so he had no choice but to come back to me. So he told me he had about seven, eight minutes. So we spent that time showing Gabriel is not the Holy Spirit. And he tried. Oh, and where he got corrected as well, he kept telling me the Ruh, Allah breathed the, the, the soul into Mary. I go, no, that's not what it says. I go, it says Ruh, the spirit. Allah blew his spirit into Mary because that's the spirit who created the physical body, human nature of Christ. He goes, no, Ruh means soul. I go, no, it doesn't. I go, the Arabic word for soul, and you know this better than me, is nafs. Nowhere in the Quran does it say human beings have a spirit, a ruh. It says humans have a nafs, a soul, and they are nafs. Can you show me where it says they have a ruh, a spirit? And can you show me where ruh means soul? It's same thing as nafs. And he didn't know what to do because every example, and he was reciting. Oh, uh, uh, this verse, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It doesn't say that. Oh, uh, brother, can you look? Uh, he was discombobulated. Let me tell you what his right hand man did. And he got embarrassed because the Lord set him up for him to ask me this in front of the ladies. He goes, There's a verse in chapter 43, Ammi, Ammi, which means writing calves. That's what he says, I'm about cows. He goes, but Ami also means breasts. So if we do what you're doing and insisting on one meaning of the word, that means we will all ride breasts. I said, number one, you're begging the question because you're assuming the word ruh, spirit, does refer to the soul. Stop begging the question, prove it. And I go, ironically, secondly, ironically, that's exactly what you're going to be doing in paradise with the whores of paradise. And I said it out loud. Chapter 78, 33. It says, you will deflower women with swelling breasts, with firm breasts that don't sag. So you're going to be writing these horries whose breasts are firm and swelling and they don't sag. You're going to spend all eternity deflowering them. So it's ironic you would say that because that's in your Quran, 78, 33. And I made sure I said it out loud for the ladies to hear.